start adding stuff to it because uh, we've been singing it just as a as like a performance piece and now we're, we're heading towards studio stuff so I'm going to bring back in some of the ideas that make it a little more interesting melody maybe a little more complicated but may end up going back to just a, a simplified melody melody during the choruses just for the sake of longer clearer tones between two voices instead of a lot of notes going moving around just more more sustains um a song that slow, it's, um, you know, it's, when they speak about drive and bluegrass, it's mostly thinking of like fast tunes, but the, the way to create a drive with a lead vocal in, in that uh, would be like in the phrasing of, of, the, uh, of the lead. Um, I'll sing it without the, 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 with the kind of drive phrasing, you'll see what I mean. This would be kind of, it's really non bluegrass, is what it is, but it would be something like, Lord, send the angels for my darling And take her to that home on high It's, it's properly measured, but it doesn't have the, the, the little, little pickup notes that the, the, blue, the, the bluegrass way would be, you know Lord, send the angels for my darling and take her to that home on high you know it, it you, you, like every phrase is, is being driven and the ends of words are given as much punch as the beginning of words like uh, in Stanley Brothers you know I am a man of constant Sorrow instead of you know of constant sorrow. Oh, it actually does work that way too. I am a man of constant sorrow. I've seen troubles all my day. Stanley Brothers style. I am a man of constant sorrow. I've seen troubles all my day. I bid farewell to old 
Kentucky The place where I Was born and raised For six long years I've been in trouble See if you sang it I've been in trouble Actually, does work now that I think of it. Just to to, to 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 take trouble and go. I've been in trouble. No friends on you. But the way they recorded it and the way that we did it was for six long years. I've been in trouble. Which is, you know what I mean. So the vocals can echo the way the runs might be played. Not necessarily in that song, but that's the language. That's the language of the bluegrass phrasing. Uh, after doing it that way for a long time, I could see giving full value to that second syllable and, and still have it be the drive. But I think to get to the drive, you've got to know this, this kind of old-time phrasing that they would do. And what that does was, I mean, listen to the backup uh, in both ways. You, you'll hear a little more you'll hear the vocal create space for a kind of a rhythmic surge in doing it the old way. For six long years I've been in trouble See, you get, get those strums coming in afterwards and if you do it for six long years Get that one strum there. In trouble, no pleasure here on earth I find. But anyway, so the vocal creates space for the backup too, and that's two ways of doing it. You know, but I've been in trouble. You know, I've been in trouble. So you can you, know, you can use a strum kind of is it, you know as the band plays together more those little surges become second nature, but it's up to the lead vocal to delineate the phrasing and the space. It's just as important as any instrumental thing. It creates space in the vocal, and that's two ways of doing it on that second syllable there of that of that that phrase and the word trouble. Um, and uh, I want to open this up to y'all and uh, hear some people sing and stuff. I want to try one other number that we're working on. Now this is. For us, this is we're working this out, and um, I'm gonna huddle here for just a second. step we're taking in our band where uh, Bryn who's been singing harmony now since March is going to sing a little bit of lead and this is a, a nice way um, to do it because this song has a, a, a good it's a good vehicle
That was fast. It was fast. That was fast. Is it too fast? You think? I, yeah, I don't think we've ever done it that fast. <laughs> <laughs> too fast to think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the other, the other, yeah, one of the escape hatches, of course, is to play a slow song fast where you, you can kind of breeze through it, as it were, instead of, <laughs> I mean, if we, if it really, if we were recording it, we would go back and go, that's, that's pretty, as Norman Blake said, you know getting a little unbelievable there so it might be more on a long lonely journey I'm going oh darling please don't you cry for in shackles and chains they will take me to a prison to stay till I die and each night through the bars I will gaze at the stars and long for your kisses in vain a piece of stone I will use for my pillow While I'm sleeping in shackles and Sleeping in shackles and chains. 
And, you know, the lead singer's job is to sing the pickups. You know, like, if you're singing backup, you don't have to sing a piece of stone, unless you, you know, like finely honed trio. You can take it as far as you want, but in general, you know, a piece, a piece of stone, I will... You know, the harmony could come in on stone. You know, that, like a brilliant burst of three parts or two parts, you know. But it's, it's always a lead singer has to sing the pickups. And it's, it's a way of getting into a song faster to not require everybody to get those pickup notes because often they're a little tricky and um, and it's b- you, a piece of stone boy that's a solid note you know and, and your harmony can come in on that just burn it you know so the, the, the lead guy or girl uh, <laughs> sorry the lead fella or gal can um, can sing the pickup and then the harmony can kind of come in and do it like that so which which version did was better was it faster slow one it was m- definitely more challenging, you know, but I think it allows more feeling to come out. And uh, that's that great thing about bluegrass is that's where the blues are in the slower tunes, in especially in the waltzes, uh, very much related to uh, um, uh, a kind of R&B feel. feel. Be like a piece of stone Like Otis Redding. Shackles and chains now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, the slower, I mean, that's that that puts you on the line. I think that, and I think uh, it, it, the tune comes out more like that. So, thank you, Brian, Billy. I guess um, we can have questions, or, or uh, if anybody wants to stand up here, we'll. Um, I'll, I'll, if you want me to listen to what you do, I'll be glad to comment on it. If you want us to play with you, or just come up here and sing, I'm, I'm, I'm using this tent especially because the sound is so good here, and and because <laughs> and because because I think it, when it's lead singing time, it's time to get up there in front of the microphone and. Uh, you know, and um, and I know this is just this is called bluegrass vocals. So any other related topics, but I think I think the harmony is being covered elsewhere. Um, so any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's uh, hard to control it. Uh, you definitely don't want it to keep slowing down. But you know what? Well, there's one sort of sp- unspoken rule is, and that if, is a, in except in s- various uh, seldom occasions, don't mess with it. You know what I mean? It, but now, sometimes I'll stop a song on stage. if, Like if we started a song too fast and we just kind of look at each other and go, uh-oh, we might stop that and just start it again. Uh, I'm in a tune like this. Um but we're not trying to put the brakes on it while we're playing it. We're just trying to find, I guess, what you would call really the tempo, the pulse, and st- and stay with the pulse and, and be with it, not trying to manipulate it. The, the, the thing that happens is is like, and I've, I, I'm guilty of this too, is like I'll try and speed up or slow down a song on stage. Um, you may have noticed that once or twice. <laughs> well, you know, what it is is that sometimes the instrumentals will run away with it especially uh, as people get tired and, and they'll find places where they're comfortable playing where they don't have to think and they think and just nice looking guitar that man just brought by here. <laughs> um, I was just looking at that rosewood shining in the after. <laughs> um, that, you know, I think that's one of the things that happens with bands is that they'll start to run away with a fast tune and, and really the vocalist is complete, doesn't have time to get a breath or phrase it properly. And that's why I'm trying to make a, a concentrate on lead. I mean, you you are the lead singer. You you can delineate what you want. You got to know the tempo that you want. And uh, 
you know, with Bill Monroe, you know, it was a couple of chops on the mandolin, and you were expected to know that that was the tempo and the key and what song it was just by his intuition and uh, and his body language, which was a kind of like bullfighter body language. <laughs> and uh, but putting the brakes on no is just relaxing, you know. But if it's if it if it had gotten, it, see the thing is. It probably sped up while we were playing it slow. And in the studio, you'd listen to it and you go, God, do we want it to speed up that much, you know? Let's try it one more time and let's let's keep it slow. Let's keep it relaxed. This is one of the most difficult things to do is play a slow song slow. <laughs> and, you know, I, I initially, to save myself any problems, played the first version fast, a slow song fast, because it was going to, you know, it's like, okay. No, not get it out of my system, but... But avoid the. Uh, it's just a psychological thing to uh, just to kind of um, have it clip along a little bit, and sometimes in the studio you might listen to it and, and it's just like God, man, we fall apart after the second verse. We better speed it up just a little bit. But in most all bluegrass recordings I've heard, it starts out at one tempo and ends up at another. It always speeds up. And the thing you don't want it to do is slow down, and you have to expect a certain amount, accept a certain amount of maybe clipping, getting faster, you know what I mean? But I think the true artistry, and I look to Willie Nelson for this kind of thing, and, of course, he's got drums and piano, which can keep the tempo much better than just string instruments where everybody's involved in, in just very light in sounding. Willie plays slow songs, one of the, one of the best guys in, out there doing the slow songs, you know. And uh, then there's always the click track in the studio, you know. And sometimes that's good as a reference. You find your tempo... And you don't play to the click track, or you may play just the beginning of the song to the click track, and they take it out after you've begun. Because it's kind of an ugly mechanical sound. But you can also program a click track, which is a, it's a, it's a, it's a tempo, it's a metronome in your earphones. They, you can do it so that it's just like a little bit of a, a, a shaker. And, and even has a little bit of a, the sound of stuff shaking, so it's not quite as... <laughs> <laughs> A piece of stone, <laughs> you know. That's the thing about click tracks is, is, you know, it's strict tempo time. You know, it's like you know, the Prussian army will have you march to them now. <laughs> <laughs> Sing the shackles and the chains. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Lay back a little bit. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, if things are, are, if the groove is strong, I'll lay back. Um, I've been, I mean, it's actually, I'll, I'll lay back into the groove a little bit. Uh, but the, then players have got to know not to slow down. They've got to know just to keep playing. So the, the tendency is, is you're trying to all play up to something, so things are going to move forward. But exactly, that's 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 a little different kind of thing. We're really a trio, and... We work a lot with Tony Rice, and uh, different soloists come in and play. And so our dynamic is, there's a little more space in our sound, whereas in Dell is a full-on bluegrass band where as soon as that kickoff happens, you've got five people jumping in hard. And so Dell can, if he hears the, it's going to be a little too fast, he can s- telegraph to the band in a way. Uh, we, that's, I think we all do that. I think th- that's part of it. Um, Again, as as the so-called lead singer, it's kind of, it's kind of you have that right, you know. It's your prerogative if you know where, it, if you know where it wants to go. But I mean, we've come off stage and <laughs> I've heard people say, "Isn't it kind of weird in there? The rhythm got kind of really screwed up at the end of that verse." And I'm going, "Yeah, it was me. I was trying to slow the thing down so I could sing." <laughs> um, <It's> loose, loose. <laughs> loose and fun. Yeah, I'm sorry. You had another. Uh, Well, the way I always recorded, I always want a little punch to it, you know. The wind is blowing across the mountain. So the phrasing. But Tony, <clears throat> one night we were playing, and he wa- he he said, looked over, and he gave me the old intuitive bullfighter stare. And I said, oh, okay. 
And he wanted the wind is blowing across the mountain. So it, it's a different way of singing. You get a few more grace notes. You know, I mean, he wanted to he wanted to play it real slow. The thing, you know, you think Tony Rice, wow, a blizzard of notes, fast fiddle tunes. You know, but he likes to pick a tempo that's that's nice, reasonable to play. And I noticed that you know, looking back to the old and in the way tempos. For various reasons, our, a lot of our tempos were slow with a bounce. Because because Jerry wasn't like like a banjo whiz as much as he was a feel player. And he, he could really put a bounce into the beat. And so we could just slow down and play all the runs. You know, like every one of those songs is complete with all the, with all the runs to all the keys. It wasn't like going along real fast. McKinley hollered, McKinley squalled. I mean, that wasn't our specialty. Our specialty was this sort of mid-tempo thing that is kind of like a... You see people move to it, you know? It's, it's, a, it's, it's, the, it's, it's a groove thing. And um, so, there, you know, that's a, that's a whole pocket we discovered. And, and, you know, certain members of the band thought it was way too slow, you know, but actually it's what stood the test of time is the fact that we're one of the few bands that played down in this pocket and yet played all the driving runs and played all the parts. Played it like bluegrass rather than just thrashing away or you know so hey interesting stuff anybody else yeah yeah i i feel i really try to feel all three beats just in my body Basically, you know, waltz, you're just, especially a really slow waltz like that one, you know. You know, a lot of times I hit the side of my bass and keep the time that way. But most of the time, I just, I really try to feel every single beat. And really, you know, if someone's dragging, someone's, or if someone's speeding up, I, I don't waver. You know, I, I really try to keep it really steady. You know, just that one note, and if and if it's really starting to drag or something, we'll walk a couple. You know, you know, and just put a little. You know, just there's there's so many different ways. You know, it's it's basically what whatever feels good to you. You know. Um. An interesting demonstration might be interesting. <laughs> is if, if Brynn will play the waltz, I'll play the what would you call the permutations of the beat. I'll play the if you're playing a waltz, you're playing three, four, and if if I play or what, what, what's te, what's that called? It's the it's the subdivisions of beats. Mm -hmm. You know, like four four can become. You know, if you got one, one, two, three, four, you got one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But, you know, especially like Sam Bush has made a whole pocket out of, of playing the overtone beats. I get what the overtone beats? What do you call it? I, I mean, it's subdivided. Subdivided. subdivided yeah. saying. So play the, play the waltz thing, and I'll just kind of... So she's playing the one, two, three, two, 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 three, one, two, three. So you're hearing that even though you're only playing, you're hearing. And if you can hear this other thing, this leads into something very, very important. This other thing being... All those beats are going on. You know, they're created by by uh, by playing the simple subdivision of the time. And if you listen again to the early Bill Monroe with Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs, Bill Monroe's mandolin, like he's playing "Sweetheart, You Done Me Wrong." Now listen to Billy's tremolo. How see? Here's the. Sweetheart. 
that many tremolos. Yeah, so that's going on all the time. And that's the subdivisions of time. You know, the, the banjo might be going, you know... Uh, The mandolin's going, which the triplets, which is the same thing as playing a, a jig, you know. Well, that's a different space. <laughs> um, so, I just think it's really important to be aware that that simple. Simple subdivisions of time also include the the higher thirty second notes, sixty fourth notes. Uh, Bela has incorporated it into the banjo. Normally, the banjo would subdivide the time according to its you know patterns with the fingers. And the guitar would play boom, chan, the pretty pretty subdivided along with the bass. Although, like play a solo to "Sweetheart You Dummy Wrong Billy" and and Bryn walk the bass. This is really a, a good way to go. <laughs> Playing all four beats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's how Olden and Way played a lot of the slower grooves. John Kahn always walked the bass, and it's based on the model of the early band with Bill. The bass player always boogied the bass, just boogied on. Hardly any tunes played played just straight, boom, boom, boom. And so that's the way to take a slow tune and make it drive a little more, too, is have the bass move just a little bit more. Um, yeah, because didn't he play the slow triplets with the walking bass? Like yeah. Any other <laughs> questions? Anybody else having trouble tuning their instrument at this altitude? Okay, uh, again, um, yeah, sometimes we, we, we we'll play Cold Rain and Snow uh, at a little bit of a clip, you know. I married me a wife, she gave me trouble all of my life. Just to give it a little more punch, but... Um, I think we tend to play it more like it. I married me a wife She gave me trouble all of my life She ran me out in the cold rain and snow Rain and snow faster at this, this, this hour of the day. <laughs> um, that's particularly one that I... It benefits from playing it at a little bit of a clip. Um, it just depends where it is in the set, you know, where what the mood is, basically, the mood. Um, it's just because the notes are so long in that. And uh, I think it needs some a little more punch to it. That's the way I feel about it right this moment. 
But um, I, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, I'll just sing the chorus by myself. Rain and snow. Ran me out in the cold rain and snow. Pretty much the same rules apply. Uh, that breaking, of, yeah, finding that break in the voice. Rain and snow. Oh Lord, just a. It's in the. It's in the, in the key that it pushes straight. It pushes the voice a little bit, so. Um, you can break the voice a little easier, you know, um, when, when, when you're hitting a high note anyway. It's hard to do in, in singing low. So, I mean, I've thought about change, uh, over the years, thought about, you know, make, taking it down, you know, to even. Well, I'm married. Gave me trouble all of my life. Ran me out in the cold rain and snow. Rain and snow. Ran me out in the cold rain and snow good there the rain and snow yeah it's, it's more comfortable there actually let's do it there from now on <laughs> uh, it's also uh, it, this is it was i learned it off of a tune that was played on the banjo of a recording so they wow it's probably one of my buttons it's scary. Sometimes you hear this, this rattling, and, and you think, oh, my God, the guitar's broken or something. But then you look down, it's, it's, the rat, it's the button on your shirt. It's just rattling on the guitar. Um, I like the way the chords fall here. to sing a song here. All right. Well, it's a trio. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all have your songbooks here? We'll just do the... I, I can probably just do as much by just singing it with the uh, it, phrasing. And, you know, Charles Sawtell put this songbook together and there's a tape or a CD that goes with it. So there's, there's a... You can study the phrasing of you know, of the original recording. And this would be s s the second song in every show I did with Bill. It was on and on. We'd play an instrumental, like a, a short version of Watermelon on the Vine. Richard played that yesterday. Uh, you know, you'd, and, and you'd, you know, that would have been in C, and then you'd, you'd never, you never would telegraph the tune by going... And then have the intro. You know, you finish in C, then the fiddle, without any reference point, would play. That is a, a really important thing. Um, you know, live sets, especially you play in bars and stuff like that. I mean, you're there's always all this sort of yeah. Let's play on and on. You know, everybody's like, on and on. Oh G, oh G, G chord. Now we're going to do it. Ready? We're in G. You know? <laughs> but the really cool thing is to finish the song in another key and without any reference to where you're going to end, start. It, because from a listener's point of view, it's like, wow, you know, really exciting, I think. So, so and then Richard would, the tempo would be, would be delineated by the first notes in Richard's fiddle. G, 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 G. Traveling down this long, lonesome highway, I'm so lonesome I could cry. Memories of how he once loved. 
thinks of me We haven't worked that out. <laughs> we played it the other night at a jam session up at the Groove Grass Festival. Um, so we would, yeah, we, would have, we would hone the phrasing a little bit more. Um, let's try the chorus. Everybody sing the chorus. Yeah. On and on I'll follow my darling And I wonder where she can be wrong way to do it to be on and on I'll follow my darling and I wonder where she can be yeah, I mean on and on I'll follow my darling and I wonder if she ever thinks of me I mean you know it's the real the phrase you attack the, the first part of the word right on the right on the beat on and on I'll follow my darling and I wonder where she can be on and on I'll follow my darling and I wonder if she ever thinks of me now that's Jimmy Martin singing lead on, on the original recording and he is a guy who's really was one is one of the greatest bluegrass lead singers his phrasing is is what kind of defined the mid '50s high lonesome sound with Bill. Uh, if you hit the if you hit the front of the word right on the beat, uh, and and are aware of the second syllable, like in golf, it's your first shot and it's your second shot you're setting up for. So you know, on and on I'll follow my the low part just kind of falls in afterwards. Follow my darling, and I wonder where she can be. On and on, I'll follow my darling, and I wonder if she ever thinks of me. Actually, it's a it's a breathing exercise, and uh, there's it, it's easy to get a little bit lazy about that. And Bill would never let you, but left on our own without him, you know, we're kind of huh. Okay. On and on I'll follow my darling And I wonder where she can be On and on I'll follow my darling And I wonder if she ever thinks of me Although I do believe there is no breath Technically in the last line On and on I'll follow my darling and I wonder if she ever thinks of me you know it's how long can you sustain it and um, you know another thing Bill would come uh, would be like here but here would be the wrong way to sing a line you don't get enough air on and on I'll follow my darling and I wonder you know as we get behind in your breathing it's all breathing if you if the brand the, the band that breathes together will seethe together, you know. That breathes together will groove together. No, it really is. Um, it's it's a technique thing, and we haven't haven't gotten into technique yet. We'll try to get in that tomorrow. But it's like a sharp intake of breath. You know, load you loading your lungs. Because uh, I didn't ever find there was a breath between the second follow my darling before and I wonder if she ever thinks of me I never found a breath there so I, I would just load my lungs and sing that second phrase two phrases together on one breath Let's see. on and on I'll follow my darling and I wonder that I took a breath in B breath on and on I'll follow my darling and I wonder there's no breath there Try it again. Breath. On and on, I'll follow my darling, and I wonder where she can be. On and on, I'll follow my darling, and I wonder 
if she ever thinks of me. It's a good song to practice this on. I'm only taking one breath now. Take a breath in the middle of the thing. That's the only place there really is a space. You see, now that's going to create more drive because there's going to be no holes. You've got two phrases. The whole, the whole verse is two phrases. <clears throat> on and on, I'll follow my darling and I wonder where she can be. You can take a breath after wonder. On and on, I'll follow my darling and I wonder where she can be. Breath. On and on, I'll follow my darling and I wonder if she ever thinks of me. That's a challenge, that one. I, I'm noticing, I'm like, I'm slipping little breaths in there because I've sung, I know the song. So I'm slipping breaths and be in li- after w- the second wonder, I'm going, just a slight breath. I think that'd be great. Try it with one breath in the middle. And uh, you breathe, breathe with your gut and give birth to the song. Uh, let me just sing one phrase. I'll show you. I showed you the wrong way to sing it, which is the breath to peter out. But, you know, it's like, on and on, I'll follow my darling. You know, same amount of breath, same amount of intensity on all the words. And, and that, that's a big help. One, two, three, four. On and on, I'll follow my darling. And I wonder where she can be. On and on, I'll follow my darling, and I wonder if she ever thinks of me. Try a couple of places to breathe now, after wonder and the last darling. On and on, I'll follow my darling, and I wonder where she can be. And I wonder if she ever thinks of me. I, th- I don't know. Can't I can't breathe in that space. Can you? So I think the last phrase, no. There's no space there. You really do it. Last phrase is one breath. Take your breath. Your only breath you're going to take is after wonder. On and on, I'll follow my darling. And I wonder where she can be breath on and on i follow my darling and i wonder if she ever thinks of me there <laughs> yeah yeah what do you want <laughs> oh that okay yeah that we would would, would arrange right now we've sort of all agreed without agreeing <laughs> to play the five chord because you could, you could sing it and I wonder if she ever thinks of breath me but way, the way we're doing it I noticed the last time we played it <laughs> is that we're all kind of playing it all together which is really good <laughs> And I wonder if she ever thinks of me. But, I mean, if we were going to take it as an arrangement, I would ask everybody not to play on the last one. I, I would have them go on and on. I'll follow my darling. And I wonder if she ever thinks of me. take that that breath you know lead singer you tell the band where to breathe <laughs> tell that band you pick her to take a breath <laughs> but <laughs> please may have another breath <laughs> can I take two <laughs> uh, yeah any any questiones yeah Oh, no, no. Uh, right now, we're in a phase where we're still d- developing a repertoire as as a group, and so I'm pretty much 
doing everything as straightforward as I, as I, as I can. It's good for me to simplify and kind of go through my, all my material and, and bring it up. But there are times on stage when I'll look at Brynn and she knows I'll, he's going to do something I've never heard him do before. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, mo and mostly it's tunes in progress, new tunes, tunes in progress that get varying chorus of, of like, um, let's, let's do the, the, the original way we did Fetch Wood and Carry Water. Okay. <clears throat> uh, you can smell it in the desert when it starts to rain Taste it in the snow falling upon the mountain